This is a wake boat, and this is a paper just published by the University of Minnesota about waves being created by different boats. That's not very good when looking at what this study could suggest. Banning wake boats. I read the report so you don't have to. Here's five key takeaways from this report. First, the report was actually written well. What I mean is, it was easy to read and there were only minor mistakes. Like on page 65, they referred to the boat as a Malibu MZX, not a MXZ. But who's getting nitpicky? They gave some good references of previous studies done and specified that there's growing concern for the lakes in Minnesota. How many lakes do you have there anyways? It's gotta be over 10,000. That's a boatload of lakes, pun intended. From the document, it was easy to understand the tests that they ran, and they were also trying to be consistent with their procedures, so I thank them for that. They would run each boat parallel to the shore and record data as the wave pack came to shore. They had data receivers at different distances from the shore that would record the wave pack as it came through the water. Spoiler alert! The wake boats created bigger and more powerful waves for each test. They even did a comparison of boats at typical operating conditions, with the Larson going 20 miles an hour and two people on board versus the wake surf boats at surf speeds and four people in the boat. They now have numerical data to show something we all knew already, that new wake surf boats create a bigger wave than 2000s runabouts. They also ran the boats at different speeds, like surf speeds or cruising speeds, along with different ballast and wake enhancement device setups. Swell Wake Surf, you can now say that your wake shaper has been tested and proven to work with science. If any of you want to purchase one, I'll put a link down below. Seems like a cool dude from Minnesota. Number two, problems with the study. When testing the boats at 20 miles an hour, both with the MXZ and the VLX, they had the wedge deployed. This is just not the best setup for any situation. A, no one who is pulling a tuber, a skier, or just out cruising is gonna drive 20 miles an hour with the wedge deployed. It's just not a thing. And B, if they were using this boat setup for wakeboarding, maybe a more advanced wakeboarder, they're gonna be going a tad faster around 21 to 23 miles an hour, have the wedge deployed and the ballast filled. I use this to show the testers lack of understanding of how to use a wake boat. If they don't understand how to use a wake boat, do they know how to use a runabout or a cabin cruiser or any other boat on the lake? The boats used in this study, a 2004 Larson LXI 210, a 2004 Malibu Response LX, a 2019 Malibu Wake Setter VLX, along with a 2019 Malibu Wake Setter 24 MXZ. Why were these boats selected? Many people have questioned this, and I echo that. Why a 2000s runabout versus a 2019 wake boat? In their defense, the document states about three times that they just used the boats that were readily available to them, along with stating that this is something that needs further research in the future. I hope they consider such boats as cabin cruisers and larger runabouts. People even wake surf behind inboard outboards with a Volvo Pinta forward drive. My goal is not to get other boat types banned. My goal is to show that other boats can produce waves of similar size and power as wake boats. On the same line of thinking, of all the boats that are on the lake, what percent are wake boats? Is it 50%, 10%? This is valuable information to know. The quick and dirty way I tried to figure this out was by looking at boats for sale directly around the test lake, Lake Independence. If they ban wake boats, they might need to consider a name change to Lake Non-Independence. I used an old marketing research tactic to figure this out, that a store will give a certain amount of real estate to a product, and that real estate is directly correlated to the volume and sales of that product. Connecting the dots for all of us. That means by looking at the boat sales, we can figure out the volumes of different types of boats. And better yet, we can figure out the percentage of wake boats among all of the boats used around this lake. Here are the results. 10 out of 69, that's about 15%. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be a little bit less. Of course, there's more accurate ways to get this data. However, this was just a high level stab that I took at it. So wake boats are in the minority when it comes to wave creation. 
This comes into play when talking about the work that they discuss in the paper. Work is force over a distance, meaning I can move all of these blocks with the ruler at one time, which is a decent amount of work, or I can move each block individually with the ruler. Similarly, a wave can wash up on the shore as one big wave or six little waves. It's still work, force over a distance. Customer demand is driving bigger boats. Even look at this pontoon. Boats like these also need to be studied. Also, what about natural causes to erosion, like high winds or frequent winds or freezing that happens in the fall or thawing in the springtime? Another thing to consider is boat pass variation. They even state this in the paper as a point for future research. I can understand their desire to be consistent with their procedures, but anyone that's around boats or boating knows that tubing is a big thing. From my days as a salesperson, I actually sold more tubes than I did wake surfboards, wakeboards, and skis combined. When you pull a tuber, your speed varies rapidly and turning happens frequently. I'm not an advocate for banning tubing or any water sports for that matter. My point is, a heavy runabout pulling a tuber can produce a pretty powerful wave, especially when compared to a wake boat. It is not okay to cherry pick the boats you want to target and suggest that they are the problem. It reminds me of a story someone once told me. There was a married couple and the wife would always get mad at the husband of how he brushed his teeth because there was always toothpaste all over the mirror. For years and years and years and years, this wife complained to the husband about all of this toothpaste always on the mirror. Well, unfortunately, the husband ended up dying. And within that first week after his death, there was toothpaste back on the mirror. It was actually caused partially by the wife. This whole time she had thought it was him and blamed him for all of it. And she just bawled when it hit her that for all those years she had complained and complained and complained and she was actually part of the problem. If you're getting value from this video, please subscribe so that I can keep making boating content just for you. Number three, people hate wake boats. Even in some of the tight knit boating community, people just abhor wake boats. Why is there so much wake boat hate? A, wake boats stand out. They are a little flashy and sometimes give off the statement, I've got money. And people don't like that. This also makes them easy to single out and to remember. Many times, wake boats are loud and obnoxious. It's almost like there's this competition to see who has the loudest boat on the lake. Just check out this one. And C, we aren't helping ourselves out with instances like this. Yes, that's a taiga wake boat on top of a pontoon. Or like this, the wake boat driver almost ran into this tour boat. And I understand sometimes accidents happen. That's just part of boating. However, I hear many boat owners say things like, well, I'm pulling a skier, so I have the right of way. Mm, nope, please read the rules and regulations of your local lake. Get educated, please. Know if you're the stand on vessel or the give way vessel. This is from the Arizona Boater's Guide. It might be different for your state, but get educated. A little boat etiquette and courtesy might go a long way to help out our cause. Number four, as stated previously, wake boats make up a small percentage of all boats that are in use. That's not very good when looking at what this study could suggest. Banning wake boats. Some of this banning has already begun. For instance, in Oregon, in certain sections of the Willamette River, and potential bans in New Hampshire. So let's break this down. These red blocks will be wake boat owners. These blue blocks will be other boat owners. For a while now, some of the loudest voices have been coming from these blue blocks. From sheer numbers, it would be easy for this blue group to ban wake boats. Essentially, the blue group says, we love and enjoy our time on the water, but we don't wanna let you, the red group, enjoy the same luxury. As a red group, and wake boat owners, we need to band together and let our voices be heard. Which leads to the fifth takeaway. What can we do? If you're in Minnesota, you can contact your DNR commissioner. Here's the email. For everyone else, contact your state representatives that are on the water or natural resources board. Let them know how much boating means to you and your family. 
and that you want to keep enjoying the lakes and rivers around you. Also note that banning of any specific boats would have an economic impact on your community. The US boating industry is a $35 billion industry. That's billion with a B. Also, maybe some out of the box thinking like this wave degeneration device or something that was even mentioned in the paper was self armoring of the shore. We then could go put gravel or other material along the shore to armor it or maybe have a shoreline rebuild plan or program. There's alternative solutions than just banning specific boats or specific activities. I'm willing to put my name in the hat to be a lobbyist for wake sports enthusiasts. If anyone will take me up on it. The other thing that you can do is subscribe to some educational boating YouTube channels like mine, Be Lake Days, Wake Man, The Wake Channel, or Chantel Boats. We're just trying to educate people. My goal is to help you be a better boater. I even made this boating basics playlist for you. Click here, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.